WWE NXT in three minutes. Counter on the screen and let's waste no time in getting cracking. NXT opens with a women's match. A good one as well. So Ray, who has only lost once, takes on Mandy Rose, who makes her debut on the NXT brand at least since her return from the main roster. Match is going absolutely fine until Saray hits that gnarly ass drop kick right in the fucking face. And that means that Mandy Rose is taken out of contention. And due to somewhat of a stoppage, Saray wins the match. I think that's good. I think Saray needs more wins, especially after she was just randomly beaten by Dakota Kai. But on the flip side of things, Mandy Rose and her goons just don't seem to be going anywhere. Just seem like very pretty women walking around, not really adding anything to the product. Would like to see more from them. Duke Hudson versus Kyler Riley. This is Duke Hudson's first chance to wrestle with someone who's somewhat of a main eventer in Kyler Riley, somewhat of a mega star in terms of NXT at least, and I thought he did a good job. Obviously, Kyler Riley comes out on top here, gnarly looking knee bar as you would expect. Duke Hudson being built nicely, but I do worry about big guys, big hench guys like this who may be potentially used more going forward, losing too many matches early on. Case in point, LA Knight, who I'm about to speak about. Imperium beat Drake Maverick and the random jobber guy from Two of Five Live who thinks he's a boxer. I don't really fucking care if I'm being honest. Boring! The crown jewel for this show, at least in my opinion, was Johnny Gargano versus LA Knight. Of course, the index factor is on the outside. Eddie Hart won Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis and Johnny Gargano begrudgingly maybe starting to form some sort of friendship. There were little hints during the match. But the match itself was excellent. Great wrestling, as you would expect. And I'm kind of pleased that LA Knight won. I don't feel like Johnny Gargano needs big wins at the moment, especially if he's not going to be in the title picture for a little while. He's going to be, obviously, dealing with this kind of index shenanigans until at least they get the wedding, which is obviously going to go tits up because it's a wedding in WWE but nonetheless great match LA Knight gets the win Johnny Gargano again goes out there and proves that he's fantastic Johnny Gargano for me is the ready made replacement for Daniel Bryan now that he's moved on to AEW and I'd like to think that WWE would have the sense to use him more but it's WWE dummy yeah yeah Roderick Strong beat some guy in a blazer. What's his name? Ichiman or something? I hate this guy. I don't get the appeal. Quirky Japanese guy again. By the way, all Japanese wrestlers, why do they have to give him these dumb little fucking quirky gimmicks? I don't get it. Diamond Mine is a fine faction. The problem is it hasn't got a star. Malcolm Bivens is a great voice, but it hasn't got a star that feels legitimate enough to lead the faction, just like Undisputed Era did with Adam Cole. So it kind of feels like a load of mid-card guys who are adrift with a really good manager, and it doesn't feel like they're genuinely much to really speak about. About, other than the fact they're going after the Cruiserweight title. Main event time, Rich Holland versus Tommaso Ciampa. Match is absolutely fine. It's physical, it's violent. It's everything you'd expect it to be actually out of this match. Kind of underrated if you ask me, but it didn't feel like a main event. That was kind of the problem with NXT this week. There was nothing really offensive about it. It just felt very middle of the road. Everything was very kind of average. It just felt like one of those NXTs that's just sitting there in the middle of the road waiting for something to happen later down the line at a takeover, and that's kind of the case with this. Tommaso Ciampa being Rich Holland, however, was a surprise to me. I thought Rich Holland was going to be built a little bit more. He takes the loss here. And then MSK runs down to kind of offset the interference of Lorcan and Birch and uh, Pete Dunne. Lorcan and Birch will get their tag team rematch next week, which I'm very, very excited about because obviously MSK versus Lorcan and Birch is just great for business. It's a great match and it means something. And it's something that you can build an NXT around. Feels like next week should be a little bit more impactful than this week. Is it worth a watch? Yes. Is it really worth getting too invested in? Not really. It was a bit boring in places, but the wrestling itself was good enough quality that you could watch it without being too disappointed. That's NXT in three minutes. I've been Aaron Nix. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you very soon for more content from the WrestlePlug.